A Maclaurin series allows us to calculate the value of a function f of x as a polynomial. For a particular function, we can calculate values for a0, a1, a2, etc. The polynomial will usually have an infinite number of terms, but the terms will often be smaller for higher powers of x, so we will be able to approximate the function using a finite number of terms. This method can be applied to many common functions, including the exponential function, natural logarithms, sine and cosine functions, hyperbolic sine and cosine functions, and many other functions. In this video, we will learn how to calculate these terms for the general case. Specific functions will be covered in later videos. Check the links below. Our aim is to express a function f of x as an infinite polynomial of the form a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x cubed, and so on. We need to find the values of the coefficients a0, a1, etc. We can find the first value, a0, very easily. If we set x to 0, all the terms involved in x become 0, so the function becomes f of 0 equals a0. We can now make our first approximation to the function. We know the value of a0, but we don't know any other coefficients. So we will say that f of x is approximately equal to a0. Substituting the value we've just found for a0, f of x is approximately equal to f of 0. The obvious next step is to find the value of a1. The trick here is to differentiate both sides of the equation. Assuming f can be differentiated, we write the derivative of f as f prime. On the right hand side we differentiate term by term. The a0 term is constant so its derivative is 0. Differentiating a1x gives a1. Differentiating a2x squared gives 2a2x by the power of n rule. Similarly, a3x cubed becomes 3a3x squared. a4x to the 4 becomes 4a4x cubed. a5x to the 5 becomes 5a5x to the 4. If we set x to 0 again, all the terms involving x go to 0. So f prime 0 equals a1. We now know the value of a0 and a1. So we can approximate f of x as a0 plus a1 times x. Substituting the known values for a0 and a1 gives f of 0 plus f prime 0 times x. We can do the same thing to find a2. Differentiating the left side gives f prime prime of x, the second derivative of f. On the right hand side, the constant term a1 goes to 0. 2a2x becomes 2a2. 3a3x squared becomes 3 times 2a3x. 4a4x cubed becomes 4 times 3a4x squared. 5a5x to the 4 becomes 5 times 4a5x cubed. Again we set x to 0, and this time we have f prime prime 0 equals 2a2. So a2 is f prime prime 0 over 2. We can now use the approximation f of x is a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. So f of x is f0 plus f prime 0 x plus f prime prime 0 over 2 times x squared. We find a3 in the same way. Differentiating the left side gives f3 prime x the third derivative of f. On the right hand side, the constant term 2a2 goes to 0. 3 times 2a3x becomes 3 times 2a3. 4 times 3a4x squared becomes 4 times 3 times 2a4x. 5 times 4a5x cubed becomes 5 times 4 times 3a5x squared. Again we set x to 0. And this time we have f3 prime 0 equals 3 times 2a3. 
So A3 is F3 prime 0 over 3 times 2. We can now form the approximation f of x as a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x cubed. So f of x is the same as before, but with an extra term f3 prime 0 over 3 times 2 times x cubed. Now we will find a4. We differentiate again, but we won't go through it in detail this time. The result is that f4 prime 0 is 4 times 3 times 2 a4. So a4 is f4 prime 0 over 4 times 3 times 2. This adds an extra term in x to the 4. So we now have an equation for the Maclaurin expansion of the function f of x. There is obviously a pattern in the equation, but it looks a little messy so we will tidy it up a bit. First notice the denominators. For the a to the 4th term, it is 4 times 3 times 2, which is 4 factorial. This arises because we differentiate at x to the 4, x cubed, x squared and x, given a multiplier of 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. For the a cubed term, it is 3 factorial, and for the squared term it is 2 factorial. So we can simplify the equation like this. For consistency, we have divided the term in x by 1 factorial, which is 1, and the constant term is divided by 0 factorial, which is also 1. There is a link below that explains why 0 factorial is 1. We are using the notation f prime for the first derivative, f prime prime for the second derivative, and so on. It would be neater to use f superscript 1 for the first derivative, f superscript 2 for the second derivative, etc. like this. To be clear, in this case, f superscript 2 doesn't mean f squared, it means f differentiated twice. We have used f superscript 0 to indicate the original function, which is not differentiated at all. We have also written the term in x using x to the power 1, and the constant term using x to the power 0, which is 1. With these simplifications we can now write the whole equation using sigma notation. Notice that the sum is now equal to f of x, rather than just being approximately equal. This is because the sum includes all the terms right up to infinity. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe or visit graphicmaths.com. The link is in the description below.